Over the last 12 months, we've heard many Western politicians come out and say that the West needs to decouple with China. But here's the interesting thing. When you actually go to the business world, I think you're seeing the exact opposite. I think you're seeing more countries engage with China. And certainly when you talk to businessmen and certainly people that operate in the tech industry, China is really the source of so much of the tech that we see every day in the world today. Now I'm live on location at the Las Vegas Convention Center. I'm attending the CES, which is the Consumer Electronics Show. This is one of the biggest and most important tech shows in the world. And in today's video, we're gonna take you guys on a little tour and we're gonna try to find some really unique tech items here. And most importantly, we're gonna reveal to you just how important China is to this global supply chain and how so much of the world's latest technology all depends on China. All right, our first company that we're gonna to profile today is a new electrical bike called Da Vinci. Okay, this was actually made with research from Tsinghua University in Beijing. This is one of the top universities in China. This has been uh, founded, I believe, in 2012, and this is a whole new range of electric bikes. I just spoke with the team here, and here's some of the interesting facts about the Da Vinci bikes. First of all, it's fully electric. Top speed is 124 miles per hour with a range of 249 miles and a charging time of only 30 minutes. You can see that the team, they wanted it to look very different from a traditional motorbike. You can see these unique designs. Now these retail for approximately 27,000 US dollars and they have made their debut in Asia. They're now entering into the European markets and they're looking at entering into the North America market by the end of 2023. Pretty awesome technology from the team here at Da Vinci, changing the future of electric motorcycles. And again, they're partnering with one of China's most prestigious universities, Tsinghua University. This is some amazing tech. Let's see what else is out there. Let me introduce you to a new company called Right Tech Robotics, based here in Las Vegas, Nevada, but actually produces their technology in China. They have made the world's first robot that can help make bubble tea. Let's take a look. I mean, the future is robot technology, and the company, again, based here in Las Vegas, they've already distributed three of these robots throughout the United States. One of them is in Caesar's Palace, here in Las Vegas, the other two are in California. And again, as industries are being changed, labor is becoming more and more hard to find. You gotta imagine that this could be the future of the restaurant industry. I've certainly seen this in many restaurants in China, but also here in North America. See how these put this in and get the little robot to deliver the beverage. We're looking at the future of the hospitality industry. Well, everyone, we're feeling good after that bubble tea. And I wanna show you a new company that I found called Robosen. They're based in Shenzhen and they are bringing some of the most famous famous robots from Americans' childhood to life here. Now, I grew up in the 1990s and the Transformers were very popular. And of course, Optimus Prime was the main one, the leader of the pack here. And this Optimus Prime robot has 27 motors and 60 chips inside. Now, the Robeson booth is actually one of the most popular ones that I've seen here at the show. A lot of people interested in this because it brings us back to their childhood, especially if you grew up in North America, everybody knows the Transformers, everybody knows Optimus Prime. And this is what China is able, enabling these companies to do is be able to make these advanced technology. Again, you can see in one of those robots, 60 microchips are needed to produce that. It has 27 different motors. And it's really amazing because they're taking toys and turning it into something that's educational for children. You can learn computer programming, engineering, robotics. And again, all of this would not be possible without China. Let's keep continuing our tour of the Consumer Electronics Show and show you more companies coming from China that are changing the way that our world is going in the future. Well, many of you know that I lived in in Canada for over five years, lots of snow, lots of cold. This is a company that's attracting a lot of buzz here. This is called Yarbo. This is a little snow plower. Look how cool this is. This is the Yarbo Snow Blower S1. It's changing the future of snow plowing. Again, all of this technology coming from Shenzhen, the Silicon Valley of China. Had a great talk with the team here. They're expanding rapidly across North America and Europe. I just found out that Ken and his team are actually longtime viewers of my YouTube channel. They really like the work that we do here, promoting a better relationship between the US and China. Can I just got one simple question for you? Would Yarbo be possible? Would this company be possible? Or maybe profitable is the right word if it wasn't for China? Uh, no, absolutely not. No, from a technology standpoint, I mean, possibly we could develop a product, but it would cost 10 times more uh, and it would be way out of the price point of anyone's, uh, you know, uh, ability. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's one of the things that I really want to focus on because, you know, as, as a geopolitical YouTuber that's talking about U.S. and China, 
again, I like to focus on the business deals because I mean, you you know, you're manufacturing in China. You guys are yep. providing jobs over there, but it's also it's rewarding us as Americans because you know we're getting great products, superior technology correct. at a good price point. Yeah, correct. and and that's and that's really the the difference, right? Yeah. So we would never ever be able to pull this off uh, manufacturing in America. We yeah. Wouldn't. We might have the capability and technical expertise, but the price point would be way too high that it would just price itself right out of the market. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Ken, thank you so much for showing us the Arbo. Thanks so much. All right, appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Well, everybody, I had a great chat with Ken, who's the vice president of Yarbo. And again, it's something that I continue to see almost every day here in the business world, is that there's a very large disconnect between what our politicians are saying, that we need to decouple from China. Again, so many of these booths, so many of the stories that companies are trying to tell really could not be possible without China. And that's the main thing I want you to get from this video today. You look at this company, Yarbo. They're changing the future of how your lawn is gonna be cared for through robotics. And what Ken had said is, he said when they initially approached him, he was the very first American that joined the team there. And he said the work ethic from the Chinese staff, the vision from them, he said they, they've just been so incredible to work with. And again, I think you see a guy like Ken, he's somebody that gets it. He understands how important this US-China relationship is. And one thing that you'll notice, I mean, it goes even as something as simple as an, as an Apple iPhone, designed in California, manufactured in China. It is this win-win combination that we need to see. And it is what is so many successful companies in the world do. They design it in their home country, but they go to China to start making some of the most advanced things in the world. I'm so excited for the future because again, January 8th, the world is reopening, people are going back to China, and we're gonna have more business connections back to the Middle Kingdom. We're continuing our tour here at CES. I wanna give a huge shout out sure. to one of my favorite companies from China. This is Time Kettle, and Time Kettle is the pioneers in AI translation ear pods. If you are interested in learning more about this, I actually did a dedicated video about Time Kettle. You can click the link above, but let's go ahead and continue our tour. We're gonna to find one final company that has that connection to China and is making things happen on the ground here in America. All right, everybody, this is one of the most unique products that we've seen here at the show. This is a robotic pool cleaner by a company named Apir. And again, look at the branding here. Look at the staff. This is a company that's actually based in Shenzhen, China, and manufactures. They've already got a very dominant market share in the North American market. These are some pretty awesome machines. And again, the continuous theme that we're seeing here, all of this would not be possible if it were not for the manufacturing capabilities of China. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's video here at the Consumer Electronics Show. This has been an absolute pleasure for me to connect with so many people. I've been actually very humbled because several of the Chinese staff that have been here working at these various companies, many of the people have actually, they're actually long-term viewers of the channel here. And it's just so humbling for me because I work really hard on this channel promoting a better relationship between China and the West. And this is the last thing that I'm gonna say. And again, I wanna reiterate this because it's something I continuously say on this channel, but it is that our world today is a global economy. And it very much is well represented at trade shows like this. Again, we have 40,000 people from around the world coming right here to Las Vegas. When you're wearing these name badges, you see people from every corner of the globe. We're doing business. And so much of that business goes through the country of China. So despite the fact that we have political differences, despite the fact that, you know, that the United States and China has the highest level of tension in over 50 years, in 2022, we had also the highest amount of trade between the United States and China, and it's setting up for even more trade in 2023 as the borders are reopening on January 8th. Now I'm gonna be returning back to China this year for business. I'm so excited to get back on the ground. It has been over three years since I've been on mainland China soil. And I'm so excited to go back because there's a lot of stories to tell and I'm gonna continue giving you guys the real insights that many of you have subscribed to this channel for. So again, I wanna thank you all for your amazing time. Thank you for supporting me as a content creator. I hope you enjoyed this series and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.